Here's an implementation of the fourth order Adams Bashforth multi step formula. There are a couple things that make multi step methods different from Runge Kutta methods when it comes to implementation. One of those is what we call the starting values of the method. So, for example, in fourth order Adams Bashforth, we use four old values of the solution to get a new one. Well, when you start the, when you start the process, you only have one initial value. So, you have to get the other three somehow. Usually that's done with a Runga Kutta method because they don't have that limitation. So in this case, um, you, I have a fourth order Runga Kutta method since um, I want the overall method to be fourth order. And as you can see, we just set up Runga Kutta in the standard way, but we only ask it for k minus one. In this case, k is four for, for our a before. So we just ask it for three extra steps. So now this us has the startup values and we put those into our output for the function. So we now have four starting values, so we're ready to go. And then another thing we want to do is the whole thing that, that uh, multi-step methods have an advantage on is that they only require one evaluation of the ODE function for each time step. And so we want the implementation to do that as well which means we need to keep a, a history of the recent values. Now we could keep them all, but that can be a drain on the memory. So what we do here is for each time step, we're going to do one evaluation to get a new value of f, which represents the time derivative. And then we will keep three other values as well. So each time the oldest value gets thrown away and we add a new one. And then with that, um, the whole method actually just gets expressed here. Sigma is a vector of constants that was defined up here. And so f times sigma is actually a matrix vector multiplication that does a linear combination of the different values of f according to these constants. Well, that's what we mean by doing the multi step formula. This is an implementation of the second order Adams Moulton formula, more commonly known as the trapezoid formula. And what makes the Moulton formulas or the trapezoid formula in particular different is that it's an implicit formula, which means there is no single explicit formula that goes from one step to the next. Instead, the next step is defined as the solution of some equations. So here's how that plays out. Now this is a multi-step method, but it only requires one starting value, which you have from the initial condition. So I don't have to do anything to get starting values in this case. But what I do have to do is solve a system of equations for the new time step. And those are nonlinear equations. So what I'm going to use for that is what we've seen before, the function Levenberg, which solves a nonlinear system of equations. So this is something that happens a lot as you get deeper into scientific computation, that the things that you want to do build on the kinds of problems that you've solved in the past. So in this case, um, there's some information in the equations that comes from the most recently found value of the solution. So that's put in and then um, that's also used as, as an initial condition, but it's used within the function that defines the nonlinear equations. So remember, Levenberg has to be told what equations it's solving, and that's done down here. So z is the thing that Levenberg is trying to find, so it's trying to set this value to be zero. And that is, in fact, the definition of the trapezoid formula if you go back and, and look at how that's defined. So each one of these steps is going to take potentially quite a bit longer than the steps of an explicit formula. The benefit of an implicit formula like this is that it has better stability properties. The big difference between implicit methods and explicit methods is that for an implicit method we have to solve a system of nonlinear equations at each time step. That can make individual time steps much slower than they are for explicit methods. So you might wonder why would we ever use an implicit method? So here's an example that kind of hints at the answer. 
Uh, this is a famous system called the Van der Paul equation. It's just a single second order scalar equation or a uh, system of two equations at first order. It's actually something that's built into MATLAB, so I'm using that. So here I'm going to solve it with this parameter mu set equal to one. And I'll solve it with the fourth order Adams Bashforth method. And you see there's no problem with the solution. This is what it ought to look like. Now I'm going to try the same thing, but with mu equal to 10. I'll still use Adams Bashforth fourth order. I'm going to solve it for a slightly longer interval, and I'll use a thousand time steps. And you see from this number here, 10 to the 198th, the solution's gone completely nuts. So let me try more time steps. Okay, now it's even worse, 10 to the 294. So I'll try 4,000 steps. Still very, very large. Try 8,000 steps. Still really big. Finally, if I get to 16,000 time steps, then suddenly I get what looks like the right solution. So I've got this fourth order method, Adams Bash fourth four, where I want to take large time steps, but instead I'm forced to take many, many time steps. Now I'll do the same thing for mu equals 10 over the same interval, but I'll use the trapezoid formula or the second order Adams mole. With just a thousand steps, I again get the right answer. So the reason you might want to use these met methods sometimes is that they can take many fewer steps, even if each step takes longer to execute. The reason for this has to do with stability. It's something that is explored in the later chapters of the book.